Hello friends. This is Revenger What If. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto fell in love with Killer Frost in Justice League? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video. That was Louise Lincoln's first thought as she came to. Her head swam in an ocean of blurry images, sights and sounds swinging in and out of her vision as she struggled to clear her head. Yup. Drugs were bad. Very 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 bad. In an instant she was painfully aware of the shackles gauntlets really sheathing her hands, the collar encircling her neck. She flared her eyes, trying to shatter them. Nothing. Zip. Zilch. Well, shit. Her ears unclotted, the blood beginning to flow once more as the world came back to her. One stood out amidst the rest of them, a deep, grating, muffled baritone that sounded just. Well. Wrong, somehow. She rose to her knees, shaking herself in an effort to see straight. Ah. Oh. Big guy. Chatty one. That loud ass voice of his was really grating on her nerves now, it was even starting to give her a headache. No chains, no bars. He growled time for meat. Meat? Oh, me gaw. Next thing she knew, the big lug lunged forward and grabbed her by the leg, hauling her upright. Let go. Meat. Before he could rip off that muzzle and sink his teeth into her she kicked out with a heel. His roar of hunger turned into a squeak of pain as her pointed shoe ruthlessly drove itself into his groin. Ha! She sneered as the vice of his hand slackened around her ankle, presenting another opening. Executing a savage spin she slammed her steel cuffs into his chin, sending him spinning, staggering backwards. Target acquired. Before she could pounce, someone else did. A scarlet streak shot past her, knocking her aside before leaping onto Nanyu's back. Orange. The little punk was wearing nothing but orange. She almost laughed at him when she saw that stupid armored suit, and she would have. Dot had she not seen those swords. Twin blades flashed out from some unseen slits in his wrists, their deadly edges flashing menacingly in the light of the white room like pale lightning. Then they struck. Shark gurgled in surprise, gasping as one opened his stomach, the other, his throat. Crimson spattered the floor at her feet. It was a nice, clean-cut frost thought to herself. Professional. Left to right, but impossibly the brood didn't go down. Strong arms lashed up, grabbing his would-be killer. Instead, he found himself screaming, jerking away as those massive paws closed around a shimmering cloak of red energy. A resounding crack answered and then they were broken, shattered like so much glass. Another strike sent him sailing, knocking him down to the deck. Wah! Threat assessment complete. A young voice drawled, whiskered cheeks pinching in a scowl, blue eyes flashing. Danger to the mission. Eliminating. Without another word he stabbed down again, this time with his bare palms. King Shark bodily shuddered convulsed, really wide eyes twitching downward to gop as a pair of bloodied hands thrust itself through his thick chest, piercing the armored plating as though it were made of wet tissue paper. Frost flinched, eyes bucking as she started, staring with the others as the man simply ripped poor Nanway apart. Coated in blood as he was he certainly looked the part. A cold, cruel, emotionless killer meant for only one purpose. Death. His orange body armor tucked in tight, suggesting a trim physique beneath, but those eyes, an eerie, empty pit stared back at her when he raised his head, when she met his gaze. King Shark chose that very moment to explode, literally. Katsu. The youth breathed out, still sheathed in his chest cavity fingers clenched. In the next his victim imploded spattering everyone in crimson droplets. What remained of his body hung like a pig skewered on a spit before them, immolated on those arms, consumed by flames. Wait. Flames? Louise looked on intently, watching as ribbons of fire and flames circled down the boy's arms, seeping into his shoulders, smoldering away the blood, before finally sputtering out. Even from where she sat, she felt just a trickle of warmth. Flames. Like the frost before her, She'd always had an addiction to warmth. She needed it, wanted it, craved it as a whole. It was like a drug to her, something she couldn't live without. And right here, right now, she was all but staring at a living, breathing inferno. And there, on his chest, as though someone had carved it into the steel, a fox. Her interest in the young man skyrocketed, just like the temperature. 
Yummy. Hey, kid, she called. The young man turned, standing woodenly, like a puppet severed from its strings. Those blank blue eyes stained now with a hint of scarlet stared back at her. Confusion danced in their depths, as though he couldn't be bothered to understand why she was calling out to him, speaking to him. Hum. She waved him over, heedless of the disbelieving looks she received from Deadshot and the others. He complied readily enough, hopping off Nanyu's prone from, leaving bloody footprints in his wake. Killer Frost learned another valuable lesson in that instant. He was a killer. Sure. She'd seen him rip apart the giant, but seeing him walk, observing his movements, she knew. Not a single step was wasted, his blind spot always angled way to the south, and away from her and her fellow convicts. Get these things off me, she demanded. He frowned. Killer Frost. It sounded robotic, as though he were reciting the name from memory. Are you a threat? Who, me? She scoffed, feigning a meek raise of her bound arms. You just tore that ur in half and you think I'm going to try something? Very well. His hand waved once, depressing a small device before her shackles. They fell away with a dull thud, her collar following suit seconds later. She wasted no time. Her hands found his wrist, closed around them like a vice, and squeezed with all her might. Flames flared and she drank them in, relishing the warmth, the sensation, the ability to feel once more. Part of her wanted nothing more than to devour him to consume this nova of hot searing energy and make it her own. And like a drunkard struggling to resist their favorite drink, she somehow managed to pull away. Oh, yes. She purred, tugging back. That's the stuff. Once she drank her fill she released him, noting his perplexed look. Why did you do that? Why not? Her smirk seemed to unbalance him, baffle him. What are you doing here? My task is to supervise, a blink, and eliminate threats. Okay. Not much of a talker, this one. So, that's why you killed him? He was a danger. Came the reply. I saw a threat and eliminated it. A thorn of pride pricked at Killer Frost and held her back when she heard those words. Could I handled him myself? Another pause. To her disbelief, delight, a light flush stained his face. I did not intend to offend. A smile curled around the edges of her mouth. What's your name? Naruto. T. T. Ibeo. Naruto? That name rang a bell. That's a shitty name. My mother told me that was my name. The boy murmured, snuffing the breezy flames out in his hand. I like it. Yours? Frost. I like that name. It's better than mine. That took the wind right out of her sails. Oh. Shit. Great. Now she felt like a class A for saying that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm used to it. A pause. Have you sustained any injuries? What? Louise's blood began to boil in a good way when a hand ghosted around her back, inspecting. A trail of warmth followed. This kid. Dot did he have any idea what he was doing? She felt her legs wobble, her knees knocking together as wave of pleasure assaulted her. All this from a bloody touch? Are you injured? It was not a statement. And no, she managed to stammer out, I'm fine. Good. He huffed. I do not wish to see an ally injured. Killer Frost grinned, petting his head. She liked this kid. It certainly didn't hurt to befriend someone who was a living, breathing torch, either. Good Fox. Naruto felt warm. Granted, he often felt warm thanks to his gift of flames to the demon sealed inside him, but this was a different kind of warmth. It blossomed from his chest and spread to his limbs like wildfires, threatening to consume the entire plane in a pillar of flame sending tiny embers of embarrassment burning through his cheeks, whenever he looked at a certain blunette. Louise Lincoln. Also known as Killer Frost. A deadly vixen whose very existence was a polar opposite to his, in every sense of the word. She was ice. He was fire. And yet despite that, she made him feel warm. Him. The very embodiment of fire. Energy. Why was this? He couldn't correlate her with anything he'd ever seen, ever felt, before in his life. Waller, mother, he painstakingly reminded himself, was always telling him feelings were dangerous. They didn't matter. That they made you weak, and weakness, sentimentality, got you killed. He shouldn't be thinking such things. Entertaining these strange thoughts. But this was his first time working with someone, a woman no less, who didn't recoil in fear at the sight of him. He liked that. Naruto didn't know why he liked that, but he did, 
Still, she was cold. Yes, she was cold. That he could understand. Frost knew how to turn her feelings off, like him, and yet. Bletch. You wish? Go shake your boomer wong at Blondie over there. Harley was snapping at the annoying Captain Boomerang, irked by his attempts to woo her. Blue eyes narrowed, his body shifting minutely where it sat in the seat. A flick of his wrists opened the restraints binding his body to the chair. Another summoned an edge from his sleeve and a third flicked it back up and over the chair, the wrist blade pointing menacingly in the Aussie's direction. Whoa, 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 mate, do it, and I will declare you a threat to the mission. He breathed pushing the edge enough to draw blood on the skin. I kill threats like you. Understand? The words leapt past his lips in a rare flash of anger, spoken before his conditioning could stop them. Boomer paled and hurriedly nodded his assent, muttering softly to himself as he demurred. Harley laughed. Ooh, ninjas are awesome. I would be, but I'm still in training. I've much to learn. Scoffing, the blonde sank back into his seat, the shackles closing around him once more. Frost did something very strange, then. She laughed. It wasn't a soft sound, if anything it was slightly hoarse, like smoke roiling through honey, and it made his heart gallop like a racehorse. Her full lips quirked in a dangerous smile as she looked towards him, bright eyes dancing. The scent of lilacs filled his nose as she leaned towards him as far as the chair would allow looking like she'd just won the grand lottery. When he saw her fingers twitch towards his. He obliged her with a touch on the wrist strangely, not knowing why. The look on her face was one of instant, rapturous delight, and it faded the moment he took his hand away. Are you satisfied, now? Well, I'll be damned. The Ice Queen sighed, drinking in the fading remnant's warmth like a drug. He speaks, and here I thought you'd gone mute after they gassed us. I am not mute. Could have fooled me. Content, she leaned away. He hoped she would be quiet, after that. Let him be. Think. Get rid of this strange feeling. It was not to be. Hey. What? Why did they gas you, anyway? Mother doesn't treat me any different than the others. Naruto found himself replying truthfully. He no urge to lie to her. There was no point in concealing it now, anyway. My mission is to ensure that you succeed at any cost. So I will suffer the same as you, T.T. Ibeo. The only difference is that I don't have a bomb in my neck. He counted three beats of silence in his mind, then all hell broke loose. What? Hm. The blonde blinked, baffled as all four of the five convicts simultaneously started shouting, something I said. Madness. That ing. And I thought I was crazy. Boomer was considerably less discreet. Oi. Is that fat in whale really your mum? What did I say about threats? The Aussie went white all over again. Right, right, shutting up now. Throughout it all, Frost had been silent. When she finally spoke, when he finally looked at her, she sounded almost sad. Poor kid. I feel sorry for you. Naruto found those words strange. Very strange indeed. Sorry. Why? Why would one such as Louise Lincoln feel sorry for him? Ought he to feel anger towards Amanda Waller, the woman who had raised him for as long as he could remember? Perhaps, had he known she wasn't really his mother, he would have felt differently on the subject. Mayhap, had he known she'd wildly whisked him away from another world, from his mother and father, made him into this emotionless drone, then, maybe then he might feel something, but he didn't. It would have been the human thing to do, to be curious about his origins about the way he'd been treated, but Naruto couldn't bring himself to feel anything of the sort. Then again, he'd never been human, had he? Didn't matter. As long as he had people who understood him, people like Louise Waite. Wait, 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 wait a damned minute. Where had that come from? His eyes narrowed at her. What are you doing to me? He didn't like this feeling. It was new, strange, frightening. Me. A blink. I'm not doing anything. Yes. You are. She had to be. She had to. He hadn't started to feel like this until she'd appeared before him. Stop it. Now. Whatever you say, bub. She laughed, winked at him, and he felt his cheeks darken further. Before he could question her the warning lights blinked red, harnesses fastening themselves to each of them. Somewhere in the din, Harley was speaking. You think that means we're here? Metal cases enclosed around them in the next instant, walling them off from one another. 
Naruto thought he caught a glimmer of fear of real fear in Louise's eyes before the steel rose up and separated them. Then they dropped. Naruto felt nothing more than the lurch of his stomach as the metal container that was his prison plummeted to the ground. He could dimly hear the others screaming, shouting, Harley laughing crazy one, that and then deadshot cursing, roaring obscenities at Waller, demanding that she open the chutes. Then, over all that, over all the noise, came the voice. Her voice. Remember this feeling convicts. I hold your lives in hand. One step out of line, one mistake, and I won't even have to detonate the bombs. My boy will end you. Ing. Deadshot roared. Stop jerking us around and open the damn chutes. At that very cue, the cases holding the split open, the chairs falling away. Gotham rushed up to greet Naruto, the great buildings that were her arms spread wide to welcome back old friends. It was beautiful. Naruto had never laid eyes on Gotham's skylines before in all his life. Never at night. His missions had taken him to Metropolis, Central City, even Greece, but somehow this eclipsed them all. They had also been during the day, in disguise, with no chance to take in the sights. This was different. Another world. Sparkling lights danced before his vision, dozens upon dozens of buildings sprawled out beneath them, growing larger with each passing moment. From here he could see bridge and bay both, stretching out to the main land in the distance, still shining with those sparkling jewels. He always loved drops like this. They were when he felt the most free. Then he heard the screaming. Crap 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 crap. Frost was shrieking, desperately spreading her arms and legs in a vain attempt to slow her fall. We're Ed. We. Are. So. F-U-C-K-E-D. If it wasn't so terrifying for her, and he hadn't had most of his emotions carved out, Naruto might have laughed. Idly, he wondered why they were all screaming. Surely they realized they weren't going to die. Twisted as it was, he recognized a show of dominance when he saw one mother wouldn't send them all the way out here just to render them smears on the ground. He wasn't afraid. He could regenerate from just about anything save decapitation. Even a fall like this would only shatter a leg. Or two. Sure enough, he felt the jarring yank of force against his shoulders seconds later than another as the momentum slowed. See? He deadpanned. Not so bad then a shoot broke. He knew at once who it belonged to, just as Frost's startled yelp filled his ears. Are you kidding me? Immediately, he reached for the release on his own parachute. Let her go, Naruto. You know I don't tolerate distractions. Instinct kicked in with Waller's voice. Obey. She was his mother, the one who'd raised him, whose praise and love he craved. Must obey. There could be no questioning. Then he felt something else. Anger. Longing. There could be no other word for it. He fumbled with the catch on his chute, even as the rest of him screamed. It wasn't acceptable. Logic dictated that the rest of the squad would be needed if they intended to infiltrate the asylum. But it was more than that. It was irrational and foolish and stupid the feelings of a boy not yet a man, but. He didn't want her to die. Negative. He willed his voice flat as the fire flared around him, singing the earpiece. She is necessary for the mission. He thought he heard a startled intake of breath, are you disobey? Whatever else she might have said died in a roar of wind. One moment he'd been gliding comfortably towards the ground. The next he kicked out with a jet of flame, throwing himself into her path. Oomph. The air rushed out of his lungs as they collided, his arms folding across her small body, wrapping around her as his own chute yawed to the right, collapsing. Not enough. He burned brighter, powers faltering as Louise unintentionally drank from him. More? Pull up. Pull up. His eyes flared an unholy white, the thrusters searing the very air around him, boiling his lungs. Up. One last time he flared the flames on his feet. At full thrust but to no avail. Gravity had them in her grip now, and she'd no intention of letting them go. He turned, presenting his back to the onrushing ground, clutching Louise tight, tighter, tightest until he heard a gasp overtaking her pleased moan. She saw what he saw, and curled into him, bracing for an impact. The streets of Gotham rushed up to greet them, and oh dear, this was going to hurt. It did hurt. Hurt so much he felt his thoughts himself breaking into tiny little pieces. Car. Pain. Shatter. A white hot supernova of blistering agony shot up his back as they slammed into the car. Steel buckled around them, 
the parachute folding over them like a blanket. Naruto barely noticed. His spine was shattered into a dozen pieces, fragments of bone ricocheting inside his body, playing havoc with his intestines. He was already choking on the blood even as he desperately lowered his internal temperature trying not to melt the car any more than already had. With all of his might, all of his mind, all of his will, he willed himself not to scream. To hold on, hold tight, and fight. Someone dead shot. Was pulling the parachute away now, the material sticky with blood. His blood. Oh. That wasn't good. Frost yelped, scrambling off of him. Then the others were suddenly there, crowding in over him with concerned looks. His vision went black moments later, leaving only the noises, the voices. Oh, anybody got any bandages? Are you nuts? I fell on my head, I'm still seeing stars. Something silver flashed in the corner of his vision. Boomer. What are you doing? That little weasel threatened me, Lawton. Now I aim to return the favor. The harsh crack of frozen ice, filling his ears, then the captain was screaming. Me arm. You crazy, frigid. Touch him again and I will freeze your balls off. Oh, shit, Harley's voice rang out. Frosty's pissed. Quiet, clown. Just let me kill him and be done with it, we don't need him. I do, oi. Listen here you, that's it. Everything dissolved into gibberish after that, the sounds of combat interposing themselves in the black. It was all falling apart. He needed to wake up, open his eyes. Somehow, someway, Naruto managed to choke out a word. Fine. He gasped out the words, expelling a wad of blotched blood. Fine. Fine 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 fine. It's fine. Just. Just give me a second. He mentally willed the shards of bone out of his lungs demanded his body to begin the agonizing process of repairing itself, melting down the broken pieces and smelting him new ones. Major injuries like this always required his full attention. Even the slightest slip meant death. Couldn't mess up. Not at all not a bit. Not even a little oh, that felt rather nice. His small whimpers of agony turned to sighs of relief as cold hands laid themselves upon his, cooling the blood congealing it slowing the flow. He stopped bleeding out his wounds slithering shut, body working overtime to recreate replace what had been lost. He laid there in a tight ball of agony for what might have been hours, but was only five minutes. Aches and pains made themselves manifest the moment he tried to move, his body cursing him when he rose. Louise was instantly there. Good one. She purred, stroking his cheek. Good fox. His brow furrowed, a bead of sweat trickling down his cheek as she helped him to his feet. Why do you call me that? Dunno. You just look like a fox to me, grinning like that. Sids, her gaze swung to the left. The way I see it. Dot you owe me now. He followed her gaze, noting that one of their number was conspicuously absent. Black Spider, Deadshot, Harley, Frost, himself. Where's Boomerang? Louise jerked her head. Naruto found himself staring a pile of broken ice. He thought he saw a boomerang sticking amidst the shattered shards. A rare smile plucked at his visage. Thank you. Get going, you. Her hand swung backwards, gently swatting him on the ass. Not like Waller. She liked to hit him in the head when he disobeyed. Hard. This was a simple pat. That's all it was, he told himself. Naruto got. Well, if it ain't the coldest motherer I know. Greetings. Naruto raised an arm in quiet greeting as they crossed the balcony into the iceberg lounge. Penguin's voice boomed out a hearty welcome, echoing across armed guards like greeting of an old gong. One of them gave a small start, but a glance from the owner sent him standing still as ice once again. It seemed camaraderie severed the blonde just as well as his gifts for intimidation. He looked utterly calm in the face of the subtle jibe his blue eyes reflecting nothing but the dancing lights on the ice. Frost wondered about that as those beady eyes locked on him. You have what I need. It was not a question. Penguin favored him with a rueful smile. Duh, I do my boy. Duh, I do. He pushed away his plate of half-eaten fish, accepting a hefty file from one of his men. Louise arched an eyebrow. Naruto operated as though he knew Penguin. Old Bird certainly knew him at any rate. She knew respect when she saw it too. What bothered her, even as she stood at his side, was thus. When had Naruto gotten a hook like that into Penguin? I've made arrangements to sneak you and your little squad, as it twere, into the crazy farm, just like you asked. 
he was saying as she came back to herself. You deploy tomorrow under the cover of darkness, so be sure you get some rest in the rooms above. And, it's important that you follow them too. Then he saw Harley. You, his fist smashed the table and went for a gun. Clown. Frost blanched. Ah, oh, crap. You're not still mad about that truck, are ya, Pengi? It came out as a small squeak as she stepped into view of that cannon. Naruto and Deadshot immediately moved away, both men distancing themselves from what was almost certain to be a gunfight. Deadshot frowned, his hands rising slowly, eyes never leaving Naruto. The man was still suspiciously still. Are we really going to play? Who has the bigger gun? Here, boys. Half a dozen guns now leveled themselves at them. Frost deadpanned, fighting a smile of her own. Wah wah. Harley gulped. I'm thinking we are. You cost me money, funny girl. Penguin was working himself into a right state now, his mottled jowls purpling with rage. Her and that loony boyfriend of hers nicked my truck of cigarettes and drove it into the river. Nobody cheats the penguin. Does it matter that I'm not with Mr. J anymore? Enough. One word from Naruto. That was all it took. You are becoming a threat. Those angry eyes flashed as he stepped forward to take the files in hand. I don't brook those to me or my operatives lightly. Now, a hand was raised, katana flashing out like lightning in his grasp, swinging down before anyone could draw a beat on him. Unless you'd like me to cut you in half, I'd suggest you tell your boys to put the pea shooters away. Before I get angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry, penguin. Why you little the blade inch closer? A moment of silence followed as the emotionless blonde stared down the crime lord, neither yielding. Finally, the latter caved. Get her out of my sight, lad. He muttered, looking away from those eerie orbs. Before I do something I'll regret. The blonde grunted and spun about. I'm glad we could come to an agreement. Frost could feel his eyes on her as she pulled on the sleeves. They'd gone to the rooms above to arm and armor themselves in preparation for tomorrow. To her surprise and delight, she'd found these pieces of her old outfit no doubt smuggled in by the penguin's men. She was all too fond of the old outfit, it distracted her opponents while at the same time serving a stylish statement. For his part the boy had claimed himself a fox-like helmet and cloak over his traditional red and black garments, the former easily blocking most of his face from view, while at the same time lending the lower half of his visage a menacing quality with the whiskered cheeks and pearly white teeth. Currently, those teeth were nowhere to be seen his mouth gopping at her in a small O. Sheesh, you'd think the poor boya never saw a girl before, she preened at the attention. Like what you see, Foxy, he looked away, abashed. Perhaps. For all his talk of being ever alert, sneaking up on Uzumaki Naruto proved deceptively, easy. Louise followed him like a shadow, sticking to the darkness, avoiding the stars, all the while certain he was aware of her. He had to be. Naruto kept looking back at her, if he wasn't aware of her presence then he wasn't a very good shinobi, better for her, then. Simpler, that way. Even so, she managed to control herself, keep her urges in check. Until he went to his room. That was when she broke. She waltzed right in after him. Simple as that. No pause no preamble. She simply gave the door's handle a good hard freeze, broke it off, then it opened readily enough for her. He didn't emerge from the bathroom, didn't protest, didn't do anything. If he was even aware of Frost's presence in his room at all he didn't seem too concerned, if the sound of running water was an indication. Hmm. Her body ached for his warmth, craving his fire, his body like a drug. Only a few hours without and she was already going into withdrawal. She cast her clothes aside a moment later, discarding the thin blue fabric in an unruly pile at the foot of his bed. She was just about about to turn out the lights and wait for him in the dark when something occurred to Louise. It didn't have to be this way, she didn't have to wait for his warmth. She could have it right now. Louise liked that thought. She liked it very much indeed. The padding of bare feet was almost undetectable over the running water of the shower. Her fingers wrapped around the bathroom doorknob and slid it open with nary so much as a sound, hips swaying as she slid into the small room. A pause, making certain he wasn't waiting for her. Then, and only then did Frost move. Striding slowly, oh so slowly careful to make the slightest noise she stepped inside, shutting and locking door and handle both at her back. Beyond she could see him, the bright stalk of his yellow hair just visible behind the mottled glass of the door. He was humming to himself, 
the light bass of his voice rising and falling in a soothing crescendo that spoke to her in all the right ways. Impossibly he was still unaware of her, and it was all she needed to know. Without thinking, Louise grabbed the handle and pulled the door open. What she saw as she stood nearly caused a thin line of drool to form at the, the corner of her mouth. Jackpot. She shook herself, battling back the urge to simply pounce then and there. Her tongue flitted out unbidden a moment later, licked her lips. Trembling fingers reached out, aching to touch. With his back fully to her, Naruto's body glistened with fresh moisture from the shower, lending light to the savage scars crisscrossing his back. Louise paused, momentarily taken aback. Many scars. Not quite enough to take away from his attractive features, yet more than enough to make her warm in places she didn't even know she had. Just like that, her last glimmer of patience slipped away. She stepped into the shower with him and closed it with a resounding bang. Well, so much for stealth. Hey, she purred, mouth nibbling, into his ear. Got room for one more. Naruto didn't cry out as her hands ghosted across his back, didn't shout or scream for her to get out. Good. That was good. He simply turned and looked at her. Saw her nakedness. Surprise flitted across his expression, momentary in its existence as her forehead pressed to his. Her body was soaked instantly in more ways than one pushing him against the wall, hands grasping, circling. S mashed gently against his chest and the blonde went instantly stiff in both ways. Something hard pressed against her. Warm. Fire flooded her veins in a way nothing else could, the heat of his body, his element, sending her skin soaring. She nearly climaxed then and there. And he wasn't even inside her yet. What are you doing to me? It was a whisper into her neck hardly audible amidst the running water. His body vibrated with untold tensions, quivering like a live wire in her grasp. I shouldn't feel this. Arms moved of their own accord, the iron vice on her hips kneading, grabbing, pulling her close. I shouldn't. Dot but you. Dot you. I don't even know what to do. Poor baby, she cooed, touching him. You're a virgin, aren't you? Naruto turned positively scarlet. Cute. Let me show you, then. Her lips found his, and all resistance melted away. Naruto's head angled into the kiss on a moan, his tongue tangling with hers. She let him press her back against the shower wall and slam into her core. All the while drinking deep from the font of his power. Hot clashed with cold and neither yielded, the water turning to ice, then steam, then ice again in the shower as they ravaged one another. Yes, Imhem, that's the way. She guided him gently, telling him what to do, what she liked. Surprise, surprise, Naruto turned out to be quite the capable lover when he put his mind to it. No more words were spoken between them for the next three hours. Because none were needed. Frost was pleased to see that Naruto smiled a great deal more often after that bliss-filled night. He was also exceedingly violent. That last thought echoed eerily in her mind as she beheld the ruins of what had once been an infirmary. The slaughtered guards and coroners, some scorched to ash on the walls, others ended by the bloody blade in the blondes her blondes hands, the weapon still dripping with blood and flame. She'd been kidding when she had suggested it would be easier just to kill them, but this this was brutal. Okay, that worked. She pulled herself upright from the stretcher, stealing a glance at his torn collar where a lucky bullet had nearly ended his life. Odd. There was another scar there, one that looked almost familiar. A little too familiar. Huh. Must be her imagination. You were right, T.T. Ibeo. He thrummed quietly, observing the slaughter with frightening dispassion. That. That was easy. A dangerous smile tugged at his lips. Fun, too. He sheathed his sword as she went to him, a flourish of steel sending the weapon sliding into its sheath. When she moved to kiss him he accepted it like O.T. was a blessing, arms holding tight to her cool body. See? What did I tell ya? She pulled away with a gleeful grin, arms looping round his neck. It's nice to cut loose, isn't it? Ta live a little? He held her tighter. This was bad. She was getting addicted to him, his warmth, his kisses, everything about him. Louise knew she was falling and falling fast. Falling hard. The rational part of her demanded that she break this off before it was too late, because love hurt, because love was cold and this was only going to hurt when it ended, hurt so much. The smile he gave her was so warm she felt her frozen heart break into a thousand tiny pieces. Yes, 
I suppose it is. Enough. Waller's voice shrieked through their ears abruptly, almost keening from the earpieces themselves. I thought I told you Naruto, no distractions. I told you, no more excuses. No more time. This ends, now. Kill her. Just like that the moment of levity and passion withered and died. With those words, everything fell apart, he wouldn't. Would he? A gun swung towards Louise and for a moment, just a moment, she feared he might actually do it. Take the shot. Kill her. Then those blue eyes, once so blank and unfeeling, went soft. His arm drooped. No, he spun and the gun dropped, falling from his hand to clatter across the floor. His boot shot out, kicking the temptation away. I won't do it, Waller. I won't shoot her. Waller. Not mother. Oh, oh, dear. Frost felt her frozen heart skip a beat, then she heard Waller's voice again. Then you leave me no choice. Goodbye, son. Oh. Naruto frowned. That didn't sound. In the next instant, the back of his neck began to pulse. Frost saw it and felt her already frozen blood freeze again, now that the collar was gone torn away, she could see it. And she wanted to scream. Because she saw that little red X glowing, shining more and more brightly with each passing second. Bomb. He had a bomb in his neck, and he didn't even know it. A snake of dread formed in the icy woman's gut. No. Blue eyes bulge. With that rare expletive his eyes met hers. Locked. She saw the fear in them, the realization. He looked like a little boy, terrified, afraid, and there was nothing she could do. He was going to die and he knew it. She knew and no 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 no. No, desperate. She reached for him, her powers flaring. Naruto. A deafening bang reached her ears in the next instant. Amanda Waller started violently as every single screen before her suddenly exploded into jagged sparks of static, plunging the room and her into absolute darkness. Trapped there in the inky black the corpulent woman fumbled in vain for the panic button, only to find her thick hand closing around empty air. It's not there, the voice hissed, dangerously close. She scrambled back, fumbling for her gun. Initially the reason for this should have been obvious in part. Naruto was dead wasn't he? and the screen before her had clearly reflected that, but no, this had nothing to do with the death of her, son, at all. Rather, it had everything to do with the intruder, with the sudden loss of control on her part. It didn't make any sense. Where were the guards, the security, the drones, the… Ah! A truncated scream leapt from her lips as a flash of steel shot out in the gloom, separating her hand from the gun. Her thumb and forefinger flopped away, the digits still spurting blood. Something silver flashed in the black once more and a third digit was divested from her palm. Now she gawped at the redhead leering down at her. Let me teach you a thing or two about parenting, T.T. Ebane. How had she gotten in here? Who was she? Why was she covered in blood? Where was she from? So many questions none of which she could speak. Nothing she could say as she stared into those eyes, gazed upon this bloody woman. Those eerie gray orbs pierced her crimson locks floating aloft in an unseen breeze. They judged, her and found her unworthy. And in the end, in her final moments before the pain only one word came to the dark mind of Amanda Waller. Bullshit. Then came the chains. Yes, that's right. Chains. They surged forward like living things. Bladed serpents skewering her in the legs, whipping her into the air before she could even hope to stumble out of the chair. Lifted as though she weighed no more than a feather's worth. She found herself violently flung down, pinned to the wall. Impaled. Stabbing. Slicing. What was she? What was she? Her good hand groped wildly in the dark. Miraculously, it found the gun this time. Her hand snapped up, firing wildly. Bang. Smoke and gunpowder filled her nose. The woman twitched, head snapping back. Then she growled. Slowly, twitching she lowered that eerie graze. Ow. Waller balked. No, those angry eyes leered at her in answer, glowing red. H. How? How are you even? A mother's love is timeless, everlasting, eternal. Uzumaki Kashina answered, rubbing at the hole in her head, gently pushing it shut, mending the wound as though it never were. You didn't kill me then, because I was eternal, and I still am. And that which is eternal, a flash of sinister, savage scarlet danced in those bright orbs now full lips curling back to expose deadly, angry fangs. 
cannot die. But if it's any consolation, that hurt like hell. As she finished, the barbed edge of a chain rose between them. No. Don't. Too late. The redhead's expression became thunderously murderous, fingertips clenching into a claw. Mama spank. Meanwhile, heat, fire pain boom equals. What? Explosion pandy and awan alive. Voices, snatches of conversation filled him. In a single, glorious heartbeat he saw his past then he saw the future. The world froze, burned, and frozen again in an instant. Laughter his own blared in his ears, modulated to a darkened degree. And over it all, a woman's voice, her voice, the voice, the only one that mattered. Stop. I don't know you anymore. You're beaking my heart. You can't keep coming back like this. You're going down a path I can't follow. The laughter overcame her, too. Everything will burn. Naruto felt his eyes flutter open with a start, tried to breathe, and found that he could not. His lungs filled and his chest rose, but with fire instead of oxygen. Memories came rushing back. Pain, agony a terrible heat in the base of his neck, spreading outward to the rest of his body, until, until, until. Death. For a moment, just a moment, he couldn't speak. When his vocal cords finally reformed, he could only ask thus. Why am I alive? It was in that instant that he realized he was standing. Levitating. Bare feet grazed the floor. Bare. He remembered wearing boots. Clothes. Yet now, he had neither should be dead. Why wasn't he afraid? He knew was dead, that this. Whatever form of existence that this was couldn't possibly be permanent, and yet he simply couldn't bring himself to feel any fear. He was still numb from the shock of his death resurrection, and waking to find that his head had not, in fact, been all but blown to bits. He was alive, and yet. Dot not. In place of his body he saw only fire, flaming appendages that could only loosely be classified as limbs. When he focused, he thought he could make out fingers, his fingers, hands, arms, legs, feet. The more he fought against the fear, the more he focused his mind, the greater the clarity became. It was a body, now and yet not a body. Everything was warm. By contrast the world looked cold. Everything was gray, devoid of color, as if he'd sucked all the life out of it. Perhaps he had. Casting his gaze about. He saw that the morgue was in ruins, as if an angry god had simply vented its wrath at the time of his death, so too had the morgue. Everything lay in ashes and ruin, and there, at the center of it all, his neck blasted to slag like jelly. Oh. My. God. Uh. Uzumaki Naruto took one look at his corpse and vomited napalm. All the rigorous training, all the effort Amanda Waller had put into stripping him of his emotions, it all evaporated in that instant. He slumped to his hands and knees, this burning god, and he wept. He never noticed that his flesh was returning, muscle and bone encasing the blood red flames that was his body. Skin took form over the writhing energy, granting him corporeal substance once more. Again, he never felt it. His mind was not there, nay, it was elsewhere. Anywhere but here. His mind ran through thousands of scenarios each trying to find an explanation for why his mother his own mother would plant an explosive in his neck and then detonate it. None presented themselves. There was no. Then, suddenly, he felt it. Now he stared down at the ruin of his body, terrified horrified and watched as it crumbled away into ashes, leaving the charred remnants of clothes behind. However was he going to wear them like this? And even if that were a possibility, they were shredded, near incinerated by the blast. The idea of roaming the hall of an asylum, naked, didn't appeal to him. As if responding to that very thought the flames returned. This time, they did the unthinkable, they solidified. As if he were wearing the very heat of the heat of the flame itself. Well. He blinked, staring down at himself. This is, dot new. He also realized he was alone. Frost was gone. Her body wasn't amongst those he'd charred, he knew it. The only question now was. Where had she gone? As if to answer that very question, he felt the whole asylum shake. Moments earlier, Louise Lincoln felt like she was going to hell. Perhaps she already had. That small part of her that still cared was raging. The rest wanted to find Waller and freeze her ing soul. No two ways about it, the would pay. Shit. She'd never thought both halves of her would agree on that, much less anything. 
But they had, and she was set upon it like a dog with a bone. A cold, frozen bone that splintered in her throat and choked her. Naruto. No one deserved to go out like that. She hadn't even been able to bury him. Poor kid. Waller had threatened to blast her to pieces, too, if she didn't leave. And damn her sense of self-preservation for making her do it. So she'd left, she'd run, unaware of the explosion of heat, of the boy's resurrection, of anything. Her lips were still numb from telling Deadshot and the others his fate. Not a word had been uttered since. Her body had drifted along after them, not caring for its fate. Numb, she'd followed Deadshot and the others into the property room, standing there while the others rummaged around for the thumb drive. Now she was staring at terror incarnate. I'm taking you in, Frost. The dark night rumbled, pulling her beaten body up off the floor by the arm. Left behind, forgotten. Louise spat in his face. Don't make this difficult, came the growl, don't be like. In that moment, a simple misconception changed everything. Batman was going to say like Mr. Freeze, comparing her to another enemy of his. But Louise, in her broken state of mind, took those words and perceived them as something else altogether. It. Dot did not end well. Frost shrieked. Don't you dare say his name. Batman suddenly felt the air leave his lungs as a pillar of frozen ice slammed into him from behind. The sudden elemental onslaught sent him sprawling across the warehouse, a harsh, jagged crack signaling the end of his right leg, badly broken. A storm all but sprang into existence around them, keening in its fury. That wasn't possible. She shouldn't be able to do that. Louise Lincoln glided out of the bitter blizzard like a grieving goddess, eyes glinting, pupils swimming with cold and fire. When she spoke her voice had changed he realized, now deep and resonant veritably, thrumming with power and wrath. Echoing. An icy inferno danced in either hand, the very floor melting, freezing, stones disintegrating between the two elements as she alighted between the bat and the exit. For a moment, just a moment, she thought she saw him hesitate. It was enough. In an instant she was upon him, driving a blistering roundhouse kick into Batman's ribs. His body ragdolled across the warehouse, and she stormed after it. Batarangs flew deftly towards her in the storm. Louise didn't even deign to dodge. Her left hand flicked and as a wall of ice arose, interposing itself neatly between them. You. In the same heartbeat a column of fire leapt from the fingers of her right, burning through her impromptu shield and blasting the bat onto his back. Melting his armor, searing his cowl, scorching his skin. When he tried to rise she simply blasted him again. And again. And again. Frost refused to relent, pausing only when the power finally guttered out of its own accord. Don't. Her enemy was left there in the end, lying prone on the floor, gasping for breath. Frost saw him and felt no pity. Only the searing anger. Dot get to do that. She was both fire and ice, hot and cold, and it was tearing her apart. Louise didn't care. She felt empty. Hollow. Like the void. For the first time in forever she'd allowed herself to feel something, and that something had been snatched away. Now the bat dared to mock her for it. Death was the only remedy for his temerity. You don't mock him. She growled. Now. Ice saber in hand, she cut down. Dot you die. Pain. That was her only thought as he spun beneath her, a glint of metal in hand. The batarang slashed across her left eye vicously, blooding it, blindingly. Arg, damn it. You won't get away with that. In the next instant the Batman was gone, vanishing into the smoke created by some strange device in his utility belt. Louise lunged after him, as sure as could be, only to find a strong pair of arms restraining her. She nearly blasted them off before she realized who was holding her. Let me go, dead shot. I'll kill him. She thrashed furiously against the mercenary's grasp, shrieking. I'll kill him. I'll kill him for talking about the kid like that. Not if you bring the whole damn building down around us. I don't care about that. Now get off, Keening, she wriggled free, and when the legendary marksman still grabbed at her, lost all control. A cone of cold fire slammed him into the far wall, knocking the sense clear out of him. Alive, yet stunned, he scrambled away before she could turn on him. Black Spider wasn't quite so lucky. His body was frozen and shattered in the same instant, a cooling corpse cast down to the floor. Whoa, 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 Frosty. Harley cried when the enraged blue net rounded on her. I got no beef wit, you. 
Where? Where is he? I dunno, frozen, unfeeling eyes gazed out upon the storm that she'd wrought. Angry tongues of flame and ice whirling about in a seething storm of pure elemental wrath. Frost didn't see any of it. What she saw was the trail of blood, leading away. The bat's blood. Kill him. End him. She'd show him. Make him pay. No. Wait. It wasn't the bat she was looking for, not really. She felt frozen tears gather in her eyes, blue diamonds plinking down at her feet as she walked away, muttering. Naruto, you stupid idiot, stupid kid, why did you have to go and get yourself killed? Yeah, about that. Louise whipped around so hard she nearly gave herself whiplash, her eyes. God. Really? Big. You. The blonde in question stood only a few yards away, rubbing at the back of his head. He looked as uncertain as she felt. Tongues of flame still bleeding from his face from his neck where he hadn't quite healed. He looked as though he'd just walked out of a firestorm to meet her. All around them, the storm itself guttered and died, sputtering out like a candle in the wind. The rest of the squad saw him in the same instant and started nigh but baffled to see their leader in one piece. Ah, Harley cooed. See, I told you, ninjas are awesome. One more word clown girl, and I will ice you, shutting up now. The clown girl quietly clammed up as the mistress of ice and quite possibly now fire brushed past her. Naruto fidgeted a bit beneath her stare. Um, you're not going to hurt me, are you Gak? That was all he managed before she tackled Louise in a flying kiss. Who said happy endings didn't exist? Naruto had never been squeezed so hard in his life. All things considered, this was a decidedly strange situation he'd found himself in to begin with. He'd resigned himself to death, only to be given a second chance at life. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, so too had he been born anew from the shell of his old self. Literally. Someone or something in perhaps the strangest twist of karma he'd ever seen had saw fit to bring him back from the beyond. His head had been blown off, he truly had died. He remembered it all, the alien sensation of heat in his neck, Frost's scream as she reached for him, then. Nothing. No afterlife, no pearly gates, no blazing flame of damnation, just darkness. And suddenly, light. Now here he stood in testament to that light, hale and healthy. Everything felt so fresh and raw and new to him, so much so that his six senses were rife for confusion. As though he'd been gazing at life through a veil and only just now had it torn away. Whatever strange shackles Mo no, the boy ruthlessly reminded himself, not mother, never mother bound his emotions with had been stripped away, leaving him reeling. Feelings he'd seldom experienced reared their heads now, roiling just beneath the surface, ready to burst out of him at the slightest provocation. Wonder joy fear fear that this was all a fever dream his last moments caught in a desperate final hallucination then there was the woman bawling her eyes out into his shoulder she'd been clutching at him for nearly a solid hour now he doubted she'd be releasing him anytime soon not that he particularly wanted her to mind wait where had that come from uh frost he croaked out she raised her teary gaze, immediately he winced. Oh, geez, your eye, her sole response was to shake him. Idiot, forget the eye, don't you do that again. I'll, try, not, to, he groaned out as she shook him to and fro. Somehow, he managed to calm her enough to get a look at her injuries. His hand brushed the side of her face, tracing the injured iris. Batman's batarang had inflicted massive damage, rendering her blind on the left side. At his touch, the battered sclera healed. Just. Wound itself shut. Gentle golden warmth radiated outward from his palm, wrapping her in amber radiance. Blinking, she regarded him in silent confusion. Eyes like frozen chips of ice blinked up at him, narrowed. Widened. Naruto didn't blame her. He was just as startled by this new ability. It was only when said ice thawed that he realized his peril. Kid. Naruto paled. Louise growled, Don't you ing move. Then she flew at him all over again. As someone who'd seldom received any form of physical contact with others, he didn't know how to respond. What limited means he had received in his youth were either a hard cuff on the ear or strenuous torture when he failed a mission. The realization made him freeze. Indeed, 
His body went stiff as a board and became little more than a rigid statue in the arms of Louise Lincoln at first. Nay, the idea that someone would grieve for him proved baffling. More so when said someone crushed their mouth against his and shoved their tongue down his throat, he didn't dislike it. Indeed, he found his arms wrapping around her waist, crushing her body to his as he returned the kiss with equal fervor. Then everything got weird. Without warning, a nearby wall inexplicably imploded from the outside, like the hand of an angry god come down to smite the entire building. Had it been just that, Naruto would have ignored it outright. The warehouse was all but falling apart of Louise's rampage, and a bit of sundered structural integrity was to be expected. Instead he found himself face to face with a crimson terror. Because there was a woman standing there, clad in a tattered dress that had seen better days. Eyes like amethysts scanned the room, framed by a tide of impossibly scarlet hair. Strange, but she seemed almost familiar somehow, as though he'd seen her before. Somewhere. Somewhen. The thought sent a spike of pain through his skull, but he stubbornly fought it off. No he knew her. Her name lingered on his tongue, yet he couldn't recall it. Just who was this woman, and why were his eyes wet? Her head edged this way and that, searching, then she saw him. Thrust a finger outward. Delight dawned in her eyes. Naruto. The boy balked. Me? In a heartbeat she crossed the room, devouring the distance between them with long and swift strides. Even then, Louise only narrowly managed to scramble out of the way in time. Traitor, strong arms closed around him before he could escape, crushing him against her bosom. Naruto sputtered, arms flailing, to no avail. Her grip was like iron, and there could be no escaping it, he'd have better luck holding his breath. He tilted his head aside utterly baffled. Naruto, the woman cooed, holding him close. My boy, my boy, my little baby boy. Um, what? Killer Frost gulped, rubbing at the back of her head. Wheel. This is all kinds of awkward. Kashina's head snapped up, and for a terrifying moment, Louise thought the redhead going to kill her, too, like she'd done to that clown. What are you talking about? Come here, Databane. The absolute last thing she was expecting were the chains, pulling her into the strange embrace. Okay, what the hell? Harley coughed into a fist. Erm. Dot not ta be that gal, but maybe we should go? Before the cops show? Naruto moved to follow, only to realize he was still trapped by Louise. As well as this strange, loud, red-headed woman for that matter. Uh, Frost? Hello? You're not going to let go of me, are ya? Not on your ing life, runt. Now shut up and hug me. The battered blonde heaved a sigh. Yes, dear, Deadshot laughed. Good luck, kid. Traitors. I could be more poetic about all this, but I'm not much of a poet. To make a long story short, we got the hell out of there and found a place to hole up until the storm passed. Couple of years in, we'd been gone for long that everyone just stopped looking, I guess. Never did figure that out. Cadmus just fell apart once the whale died. Gooding riddance, I say. Never liked her. After what she did to Naruto. My only regret is that I wasn't able to kill her myself. Would have liked to rip out her spine myself. Same Kashina got to her first. E.H. Guess I can sell for having the whale's head frozen. If the bat had any beef with us for tearing up his city, he never collected. He tracked us down once. Once. Never again. Kid's mom is terrifying. I still don't understand how you can freeze someone with a look, and I'm a stone-cold killer. Seriously. She just glared at him and he got right back in that damn Batmobile and drove off, ing scary. That. That's my mother-in-law. Dear God, if I'd broken the kid's heart she probably would have broken me, in freaking half. Anyhow, a few years in, me and the kid went and got ourselves hitched. What? You thought it'd be a long ass courtship or something? With dates and flowers and mushy shit? P.S.S.H. That. I put that ring on his finger and dragged his sorry ass to the altar. Not that he fought me. After the shit we went through in Arkham. Dot TCH, damn. What's another phrase for bonding under fire? Ice, in my case, gaw. See, this is what I'm talking about, I'm not good with words. Why the hell am I writing in this damn journal anyway? Piece of shit's supposed to help with my stress now that I'm preggers again? It's ing.
Too much swearing. Four bucks in the jar. Arg. That's another reason I'm writing this. Still sounds weird. Dot but in a good way. Helps to distract me from the twins theatrix these days. Little buggers are ecstatic about getting a little brother or sister after all this time. Hey. Elsa's over the moon and Natsu almost burned down the kitchen the other day. Not that I blame them. It's been 10 years after all. Didn't think I could have another kid after popping those two out. Hell, didn't think I wanted to. They kicked. What? Why are y'all looking at me like that? Yeah, I said twins, didn't I? They've taken a liking to Central City. Though I pity the place when they grow older. I'm. Dot not a very good mother, thankfully, I'm not alone. It would be twins. A boy and a girl, a family, mine. Scene break. Look, daddy's on fire again. Me too. Me too. None of that. Louise stifled a small smile as she eased her journal shut and reluctantly returned her attention to reality. Her fingers ran over its worn cover, the red leather crinkling slightly at her touch. After a moment's consideration she locked it, then froze it to be certain. Wouldn't do for someone to read innermost thoughts after all. Her husband was already smug enough that she still used the damned thing to begin with after all these years. If he somehow read the words contained within, she might just die of mortification. Pushing herself upright off the couch, she grimaced slightly. Damn it, she was getting big. Ah. Uh. Seriously, she groused, though the words lacked rancor, what am I going to do with you? A clamor of pots and pans answered her. Not my fault, Naruto's voice echoed from the kitchen. Sit back down you're not allowed to cook today. Well, you can't cook for shit, she called back. I can if it's ramen, woman, he shouted. Louise bristled in horror. You are not feeding our children ramen, la 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 la, can't hear you. For someone who hadn't known what, emotions, were, he'd made a remarkable recovery. Restraining a small smile, Frost shook her head and gave in. Damn, she'd gotten soft. A few years ago she would have fought him tooth and nail on what they fed her babies. Now, after his last abysmal attempt at cooking, she was content to wait for the kitchen to explode in his face before she acted. Judging by the ruckus he and Natsu were making, it wouldn't be long now. They'd probably have to order takeout. Maybe pizza with peanut butter? Talk about weird cravings. Sure enough, she found her daughter nearby. Slim legs kicked quietly against a chair even as she dialed the number. Huh. Clever girl. Hey, kiddo. She hummed, brushing pale fingers through her hair. What are you up to? Ordering pizza. Her daughter chirruped, her bright eyes staring into the distance. Daddy's going to blow up the kitchen again. Where's grandma? Looking for grandpa again, came the reply. Harley and Shot went with her. Louise nearly spat out her drink. Oi, no cursing allowed. But daddy uses it. Frost sighed. Ah. Ah. Kashina, must have gone on another of her trips to. That. World. Frost still didn't understand the concept of multiverse theory and frankly, she didn't want to. If Naruto had come from another world, he showed no desire to return. If his mother wanted to come and go as she pleased, that was another matter. Somehow, she suspected her daughter was responsible for that one. She was, after all, nothing if not curious. Still, if Kashina had brought those two with her on her little adventure. Dot she almost pitied that world. Spirits, Naruto truly did have a terrifying mother. What did I tell you about giving her ideas? Her daughter beamed. To not to. Elsa was the spitting image of her if she could ever be bothered to wear a dress her long, ice blue hair bound back in a loose braid over his shoulder. Even as she looked on, the little imp flashed her a daring grin. Today she'd chosen a pink, why did it have to be pink? And blue number that almost made her look like cotton candy. Fitting, given her sweet temperament and the nature of her powers. Only time would tell if she turned her gifts toward her own ends, or for the sake of others. Whereas Natsu resembled his father, almost frighteningly so. Powers and all. As if waiting for that very moment because seriously, her luck the kitchen exploded into a fresh wave of fire. What did I tell you about cooking? Louise lobbed a wave of cold at the searing heat, stifling it with a dark glower. Something swung open with a mighty crash, hacking and coughing. Louise didn't have to look to know who just exited the kitchen. The pair of soot-blackened figures that emerged, both large and small, told her all she needed. 
Elsa's patient sigh spoke volumes. Her husband's brief laughter turned to a coughing grunt as he caught their children and spun them around. Elsa giggled and Natsu clambered onto his shoulders, allowing him to stoop down and meet Louise halfway. Somehow, even with only one arm, he was able to lean down and press his mouth to hers. The kiss that followed made her toes curl. Pizza, he suggested, pulling away. Already done. One of the twins tilted their heads suddenly, regarding him with the curiosity only a child could possess. Daddy, Natsu posited, why'd ya set the flash on fire today? Was he a bad guy? Peefed. Louise's face turned red in a vain attempt to contain her laughter. Ah, so he'd gone and pranked the speedster again. Naruto palmed his soot-soaked face viciously. Shit. Um, well, you see, sweethearts. Something in his sheepish explanation warmed Louise's heart more than words ever could. Ah. Warmth. Yes, that was the word. She'd been cold until she'd met him. She hadn't know what life was, what it meant to trust others. To rely on one person was perhaps the extent of her abilities, but that didn't change how she felt in his instant. Not cold. Warm. Once, she would have been content with riches. Now? No. Frost knew she didn't need money to prosper, nor that sweet, sweet fame she'd once craved. She had everything she needed right here. It was a humble life perhaps, but it was her life. Hers. In the end, this was all that truly mattered. The thought almost made her laugh aloud. When had she come to realize that? When had she fallen for him? When had she changed? She already knew. Here, in the arms of this complete and utter buffoon of a husband. He made her realize. No man was an island. You couldn't live your life alone. You could try certainly, but in the end you'd fail. No, the meaning of a life well spent was a life lived with others, one shared with family and friends. Thanks to him, she finally had both, and only no did she realize it. You know, kid. I think I might have fallen for you. The whiskered warrior sputtered aloud. Oh. Where'd that come from? Killer Frost only smiled. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.